In these uncertain times, the world needs to know what's safe and what's evil. Is innovation getting away from us? One military doctor wants to control your mind. We need to know, are these brain rating devices safe? Or will they be used against us to control our minds? It's a question as old as humankind. Is the government trying to control you and influence your mind? More importantly for this video, are personal EEG devices like this one, this Muse here, designed to control your mind? If you haven't seen my previous videos, this is the Muse. You put it on your head like this. It's got sensors that sense your brain waves, connects to your smartphone, and through operant conditioning, it teaches you how to meditate. It's a really useful device. And it was kind of funny when I started talking about this technology on my YouTube channel because I would get these comments now and then that were asking about mind control and the potential uh, side effects and implications of that with this technology. And at first I thought that it was the conspiracy theorists or people just coming along to try to troll me and evoke an emotional reaction out of me. But with time, I started to realize that people really do have legitimate concerns about this technology and its ability to control the mind. And I think it's important at this point to take it to the whiteboard and talk about how this device actually does control your mind, but probably not in the way that you think that it does. Hey guys, Dr. Cody Raw with Tech for Psych. Thanks so much for the listen. If you're interested in more about the interface between technology and the mind, hit that subscribe button right there and click that little bell so you get notifications when I upload new videos. Remember, the ultimate mind warfare that's out there is for information. Remember, science is king, self-development is the ultimate goal. Stay safe out there. I'll talk to you again very soon. Until next time. Okay, so I think that the people that are actually worried about devices like the Muse or Emotive affecting their brains and or their minds are worried about a specific type of influence. They're worried about external electromagnetic influence. And this is actually pretty interesting when you think about it because it sounds like crazy talk, but part of it actually has a little bit of legitimacy. We live in a world that is bathed in electromagnetic radiation. The earth is producing electromagnetic waves, stars out in the universe are producing electromagnetic waves, and our devices are producing electromagnetic waves. And that all has to do with transfer of energy, okay? I've talked about this in a previous video, but I noticed that people that actually do cross that bridge into psychosis are pretty often worried about this kind of stuff. And I have to wonder if it has to do with their perception that they're actually a little bit more uh, sensitive to this type of thing. We have pretty well documented cases of people that aren't psychotic that are actually um, sensitive to electromagnetic radiation like power lines and that type of thing. So it's not that far outside of the scope of things. I just think that people get confused about the level of influence that this type of stuff can have over the individual person, okay? So going to the whiteboard, we have, we have our person, right? Yay, and in that person is the brain. So there's my drawing of the brain. Okay, so you got the temporal lobe right here, frontal lobe. You got the back of the brain, the cerebellum, brain stem. All right, so what are, what, are, what are these people talking about? They're concerned about external waves actually affecting the way that the brain is functioning. Okay, so you have some kind of source out here, whether that be an electronic device or some kind of transmission device that is sending electromagnetic waves to the brain and influencing it somehow, okay? If you go back to physics, what you have is electrons moving along a path, right? This is electricity. And around that, you have magnetic waves in a tangential form, okay? So that's electromagnetic radiation. And what's interesting about the magnetic part of it is that it can actually cross biological tissues. So um, to get electrically stimulated, it has to be direct electrical stimulation. So things like halo neuroscience or uh, think are direct electrical stimulation devices that, that you can actually feel the electricity on your scalp as it ticks, okay, or vibrates and sends that electricity through your skin into different nerves to stimulate 
different parts of the brain. But what we're talking about right here is more of an insidious paranoid point of view that electromagnetic uh, radiation could actually be influencing the behavior of someone with their brain. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things that I see uh, wrong with this. First of all, you know, the brain is encased in the skull. You got cerebral spinal fluid around it. It's pretty well protected. And to do things like magnetic resonance imaging or MRI to get a uh, an image of the brain, we have to have these huge magnetic fields and they send radio pulses just to get an image of the brain. And that's bathing the brain in that same uh, force, okay? And the idea is that this would have to be super strong for it to have effects on the brain compared to the MRI. And then the other thing too is you're, you're bathing the brain in, in all of the different forces and it's spreading out, it's spreading out over the brain. <clears throat> to actually have an effect on thoughts and emotions and behavior, you'd have to have a lot more nuanced effects of the electromagnetic radiation. Um, Gergay Bushaki talks about this a lot in his book, Rhythms of the Brain. Okay, um, local areas of the brain communicate to each other through very fast oscillations called gamma waves. Okay, the neurons are communicating to each other by firing very fast. And this propagates outwards to where there's uh, slower frequency patterns that are communicating globally across the brain. All right, so it's a very complex process and I suppose that you could get electromagnetic radiation to change the overall oscillation patterns, but they'd be very slow and if anything, they would affect mood or something like that. But I, again, I'm almost giving it too much credit just because the scientific, the, the logic of it just isn't panning out. And like I said, I think that when people uh, become very paranoid or are very sensitive to this type of thing, they think that it's, it's influencing them. Um, but I don't think the government or uh, Muse for that matter is causing th this type of influence. Now going back to other legitimate safety concerns are, all right, is this device emitting radiation that could cause cancer or something like that in the brain? Um, there's, a, there's a couple of caveats to that one. All right, so people have been doing research uh, looking into whether cell phones are causing more brain cancer or not. And there's some studies to suggest that there's a greater risk, that, it, that cell phones might be a carcinogen if you spend a lot of time with them right up by your head. But the overall uh, epidemiological occurrence of brain cancers has not gone up over the last 40 years, okay? Most studies have been concluding that. So the idea that our new technology is causing more brain cancer isn't really panning out. And the caveat of that is that the device, the devices like Muse and Emotive, Muse says it's very, very clearly on its website, the type of radio frequency that it emits is the Bluetooth frequency, okay, which is many times lower in actual power than the signal that the cell phone emits. It uses uh, Bluetooth low energy signals to propagate that. So several times more benign than a cell phone next to your head. So I think that addresses some of the concerns that something like the Muse could cause brain cancer, which would not be good, obviously. So I'm glad that they did that research and have that information to assuade our fears. And the other thing too, is I read that it actually emits the Bluetooth signal away from the head just to mitigate any additional fears that the radio frequency that would have some kind of effect on biological tissue. Now, just to stoke the fire a little bit and get your conspiracy theories really going, there is technology today that is being researched to alter things like perception, and it's actually being used in mental health today for treatment of depression and anxiety. It's called transmagnetic stimulation, and it comes for the most part these days in the form of a chair with a probe that goes over the top of a person's head. It doesn't actually contact the skin. What it does is emit magnetic pulses that depolarize the neuronal tissue beneath of it, causing an effect, okay? So we're going back to our person. I'm gonna give him a smiley face. And you sit him in this chair 
this transmagnetic stimulation chair and it's got the probe that's over his head okay and that actually releases the magnetic pulses so you got the probe here and it's releasing these pulses and what happens when a magnetic pulse hits a neuron is it actually depolarizes it so you can imagine the magnetic wave coming down hitting the biological tissue and causing the electrical stimulus to go forward. So I did some training in this and what they actually do is move it over your motor strip and give you a little tick, 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 tick. The magnetic pulses come and you feel it just slightly on the scalp. And my gosh, your, your thumb moves. It's, it's wild. So what's happening is that the magnetic wave is propagating through the skull and the cerebral spinal fluid, depolarizing neurons in the motor strip that travel all the way down up through your arm and cause your thumb to twitch. All right, so that's how they know that they're over the motor strip and then they move it a little bit to the prefrontal cortex, which is um, heavily indicated in depression and anxiety. And the idea is that stimulating that area helps assuage some of those symptoms of that disorder. So that's what it's being used for in psychiatry, but there's some really bizarre studies coming out showing that you can use different areas of stimulation to alter things like visual perception, time perception, and learning. How bizarre and cool is that? So some of this technology is coming down the pipeline where you're actually able to influence neurons and change things like learning and perception. All right, one last thing, because I know that I said that Muse controls your mind at the beginning of this video, so I'm gonna explain what I meant. So again, Muse, head device. All right, so the idea is that you put this thing on, that's Muse. Okay, and what it's doing is sending a signal to your smartphone that's analyzing the brain rhythms, all right? When it analyzes the brain rhythms, it can tell whether you're in a relaxed focus state or if your mind is wandering. And what it does is through headphones, these earbuds, tells you whether you're in the right spot or not, okay? So basically, if you get distracted, the scene will get chaotic, and usually you're on a beach or something similar to that, and the waves will start crashing, and the wind will start roaring, and you know that you have uh, wandered in your attention. And the idea is to get it back to relaxed attention into a meditative state where the scene becomes very serene, the waves die down, the wind dies down, and if you're calm for 30 seconds straight, you hear birds chirping, it's a really uh, nice experience. And what it's doing is basically like guiding you down this path through operant conditioning, which is a type of learning. If you think about it, it's not much different from being on a bike and falling off the bike as a kid because gravity keeps pulling you down and unless you balance correctly, you're gonna fall. So the idea is that unless you're balancing correctly with your mind, the computer is going to let you know about it by um, making the scene very chaotic, okay? Operant conditioning is a very efficient way of learning. It's really, um, you know, through trial and error how some artificial intelligence programs are actually learning through machine learning. So operant conditioning gives you feedback on whether you did it right or not and little adjustments are made until you, you eventually learn how to do it correctly. And in a way it is influencing your mind, but it's all voluntary, right? It's all voluntary learning. And as you can see from what I've broken down, the voluntary learning that you get from the Muse is very different from the idea of external electromagnetic radiation actually affecting the brain and either causing your emotions or behavior or thoughts to be altered. Um, what it's really doing is teaching you how to have better uh, emotional regulation and be able to carry that with you throughout your everyday life to really augment other things that you're trying to do. It gives you better attention, gives you better emotional control. Really, I can't think of anything better than um, meditation for self-improvement. All right, so as a recap, we looked at influence. We looked at the difference between external electromagnetic waves and uh, operant conditioning learning process that both influence the brain but in very different ways. We took a look at 
what external electromagnetic radiation would look like. We looked at how difficult it would to actually uh, affect the brain. We looked at operant conditioning of the muse and other uh, EEG devices that are helping us learn. And we took a look at some really interesting technology called transmagnetic stimulation and other direct stimulation devices like Think and Halo Neuroscience that can actually affect brain tissue, but not without you knowing about it. And so in long story short, I don't think the government is actually controlling your mind through electromagnetic radiation. Although I am in the military technically, that means I work for the government and I'm trying to influence you with this video. So technically, I guess the government is trying to control your mind.